Welcome to Ms Mojo and today we'll be taking a trip down memory lane and counting down our picks for the most acclaimed and culturally significant movies that were released in the year 2004. How am I doing? Still here. <laughs> Good, I like being here. Number 10, 50 First Dates. What? I'm just joking around because of what we talked about yesterday. Yesterday? I've never even met you. Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore have collaborated on a few projects throughout the years, and we love watching them play opposite one another on our screens. In their second film together, Sandler plays Henry, a charming playboy who falls in love with Barrymore's Lucy, an art teacher with short-term memory loss. It's gonna be all right, Lucy. Don't call me Lucy. I barely know you. Sweetie, you're sort of dating him. But Sorry, I'm not better looking. Despite their respective challenges, the love story between the two characters unfolds with a timeless charm that continues to captivate audiences years later. Even today, Sandler and Barrymore still dazzle us in comedies, on talk shows, and occasionally in dramas. But this film stands out as a quintessential piece in both of their repertoires. Number 9, 13 going on 30. What are you laughing at? I don't know. <laughs> Life, timing, being here with you, eating razzles. Is there a more lovable character than Jenna Rink, with her childlike wonder and innocent view of life? When she unexpectedly wakes up to find herself 17 years older, she takes action to turn her life around. Jenna shows us that our preconceived notions of an ideal life may not be as fulfilling as we imagine, and it's a sentiment that resonates across the generations. I think all of us want to feel something that we've forgotten or turned our backs on, because maybe we didn't realize how much we were leaving behind. Luckily, reconnecting with her roots, and more importantly, with her childhood sweetheart, Matty, gets her back on the right path. Mark Ruffalo and Jennifer Garner deliver iconic and engaging performances, making this film an instant go-to whenever we need a little reminder of the important things in life. Are you okay? <laughs> I should have talked and roll. <laughs> oh, I'm getting old. No, you're not, because that means I am. <laughs> Number 8, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. This film may have been set in the 1970s and released in the early 2000s, but it's just as funny in the 2020s as ever. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Really? People know me. Anchorman revolves around a group of egotistical men in the world of broadcast news whose lives get rocked when a newswoman joins their team. It boasts a hilarious cast including Will Ferrell, Christina Applegate, Steve Carell and Paul Rudd, all in the prime of their comedy careers. I love desk. Brick, are you just looking at things in the office and saying that you love them? I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. It's a preview of what's to come, as these actors have kept us in stitches long after this movie's release, including in the sequel, Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. With iconic one-liners and extremely quotable characters, it's hard to not be obsessed with this comedic masterpiece. Ron! Where are you? I'm in a glass case of emotion! Number seven, Ray. Okay, Bama, why don't you get on up there and show me what you got? Well, I, I'm not prepared to do my thing right now. Tonight, well, I, this is the only audition you're gonna get putting. Widely regarded as one of the greatest musicians of all time, the story of Ray Charles's life had not received an in depth cinematic exploration until this 2004 film came along. Charles was a trailblazer in music. 
who expertly fuse different genres while grappling with substance use disorder and racism in the mid 20th century. In the film, Jamie Foxx does a brilliant job at humanizing and paying homage to Charles with a performance that garnered him a well-deserved Academy Award for Best Actor. I've been performing gospel and blues all my life. It's who I am. And if I'm gonna do my own thing, I, I gotta be natural, right? It's no wonder Ray is considered a modern classic and a must-see for all music lovers. The film also serves as a fitting tribute to Charles, who sadly passed away the same year it was released. Number 6. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Do I know you? Jim Carrey isn't exactly known for his dramatic roles, but he has undoubtedly proven himself as a force to be reckoned with in that capacity, and this film is no exception. Carrey stars opposite Kate Winslet as Joel and Clementine, two former lovers who try to expunge each other from their memories. What if you stayed this time? I walked out the door. There's no memory left. Come back and make up a goodbye at least. Let's pretend we had one. Heartbreaking and invigorating all at once, the film is enhanced by its science fiction elements, which lend it a timeless and otherworldly quality. Complete with an all-star cast and one of the most unique plots in the history of cinema, it's hard to believe that 20 years have passed since this film first graced our screens. Just... I've never felt that before. Uh. I'm just exactly where I want to be. Number five, Before Sunset. It's funny because I read a, an article on your book uh -huh. and uh, it sounded vaguely familiar. Vaguely, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't put it all together until I saw your photo. The second film in the Before series was released nine years after the first, right when audiences were anxious to hear what became of Celine and Jesse's romance. Despite our hopes for a rekindled connection, the movie reveals that their lives did not unfold as we would have imagined after the first film. I guess when you're young, you just believe there'll be many people with whom you connect with. And later in life, you realize it only happens a few times. Yeah, and you can screw it up. Misconnect. In this installment, Celine and Jesse's separate paths converge nearly a decade after they promised to reunite, leaving us with that same hopeful feeling as they appear to abandon their lives to pursue each other once again. Luckily, in the 20 years since, we've been given a conclusion to their love story in the form of a third film, Before Midnight. Well, what can I say? I mean, it's tough out there in time and space. You. On the other hand, are even more beautiful than I remember. Number four, The Notebook. I want all of you, forever, you and me, every day. <laughs> there are few 21st century love stories as iconic as this one. Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling's performances broke our hearts and then put them back together again in this romantic movie about star-crossed lovers in the 1940s. Who could forget their heartwarming declarations of love in the rain? It wasn't over. It still isn't over. The Notebook is not just a film, but a testament to the power of young love and a hallmark adaptation of Nicholas Sparks' works. Both lead actors went on to have exemplary careers in the years that followed, with McAdams' breakthrough role coming in the same year. More on that later. While some may think the movie hasn't aged well, we think it's aged as well as Noah and Ali's love. Now say you're a bird too. If you're a bird, I'm a bird. 
Number three, The Incredibles. With a plethora of superhero movies to choose from in the 2020s, it's important to recognize those that have truly stood out. It's a whole family of supers. Looks like I've hit the jackpot. Oh, this is just too good. Mr. and Mrs. Incredible are forced to hide their family's powers to help keep the world safe. However, once they rediscover the thrill of being superheroes, they realize it's what they're meant to be doing. That was so cool when you threw that car. Not as cool as you running on water. Hey, Mom, would you, hey, Mom, that was sweet when you snagged that bad guy with your arm and kind of whiplashed him to the other guy. Yeah, it was so sweet. Yeah. Whether it's the compelling characters in The Incredible Family, the unique premise, or the unforgettable Edna Mode. There just isn't much to dislike about this film. No matter how old you are, The Incredibles has something for everyone, and we can't help but be grateful for that long-awaited sequel. Did someone say trilogy? We certainly hope so. The public is in danger! My evening's in danger! You tell me what my suit is, woman! We are talking about the greater good! Number 2, Kill Bill, Volume 2. I've killed a hell of a lot of people to get to this point. But I have only one more. The last one. The one I'm driving to right now. This Quentin Tarantino sequel was a quick turnaround from its predecessor, coming just six months after the first volume. Whatever expectations we had going into the theatres were undoubtedly exceeded, watching The Bride finally accomplish her drawn-out quest for revenge. You and I have unfinished business. Baby, you ain't kidding. Kill Bill Volume 2 is chock full of flashbacks and fight scenes, and in classic Tarantino fashion, an engaging score, captivating dialogue, and a hero's ending. Needless to say, it was the perfect conclusion to this acclaimed duology. The Kill Bill movies were relatively early entries in Tarantino's filmography, and we've seen only pure cinematic gold from him in the years since. We're honestly excited to see what he makes next. I must warn you, young lady, I am susceptible to flattery. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mean Girls Sit down. Seriously, sit down. Why don't I know you? Endlessly quotable and undeniably relatable, this movie is as relevant now as it was upon its initial release. Mean Girls revolves around Katie Heron's transformation from a homeschooled outsider to reaching the top of the social chain as one of the plastics. It introduced the world to the unforgettable Regina George, Janice Ian, the word fetch, and the mathletes. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist! Since then, there have been countless attempts to recreate this film's magic, from a sequel to a Broadway musical, and now a remake written once again by the brilliant Tina Fey. The performances from Lindsay Lohan and Rachel McAdams are particularly noteworthy. I could talk to him for you if you want. Really? You would do that? The one-liners are still prominent today, and Mean Girls remains a go-to for a girl's night out. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. Which movie made you feel nostalgic for the early 2000s? Let us know in the comments. It's so nice to have the family together for dinner. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.